I'm Rob Schlachter, and we would love to welcome you to the initial voyage of our collaboration with WMCT-TV and the Marlboro Regional Chamber of Commerce, bringing you the Chamber Spotlight. And the intent of this uh, series is to really share the vast amount of diverse businesses that we have within the Chamber, just to educate and inform you about what's going on in your backyard and the amount of different industries that make up Chamber businesses. And we're going to kick it off with understanding the entrepreneurial vision, because we have quite a few entrepreneurs within the chamber. And we selected a few that we think you will find very, very interesting and informative. And I'm very happy to welcome our first guest to the show, Eric Schwartz from Infu Infusion Art Glass. So, Eric, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you on board. Thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, we're very, very excited to talk a little bit and share your story. So, just very briefly, tell us about the vision that you had for when you started your business. Well, let me first of all say I had a full career in industry before I started this. and um, But all during that time of this career, I was an engineer and engineering manager. All during that time, I kept a hobby or sometimes a side hustle of doing glass, stained glass and fused glass. So I always had a dream to open a gallery, a glass gallery. So at the ripe old age of 64, I was in a position in my life where I could leave industry and I um, started a gallery. My gallery was in SOA, which is an arts district in the south end of Boston. Um, which was terrific to be involved in that area. But um, one day on my way to the studio, I noticed a bunch of emergency vehicles. Turns out there was a water main break and my studio got flooded. I got two to three feet of water in the studio. Wow. So um, I had to leave because the building had to be vacated. It was down, shuttered for about a year. So I had to leave, I had to find a new space. So finding art space, that is both gallery and studio space with retail capability can be difficult. But I ended up finding um, a great space in the landing at Hudson Mills on Broad Street in, in Hudson. And so um, the vision for my gallery initially was not to make a ton of money. I'm, I'm in a position in my life where I don't need to make a ton of money. But I want to, of course, you know, pay the rent, buy new materials, buy good equipment and stuff like that. <laughs> but I wanted to make good art and aspire to make great art. So th the basic vision of, of the studio is to create glass pieces, get them out in the world, and make some, and make some more until someday I do my masterpiece. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, I have to say that I believe that the mill building in Hudson actually really fits your concept. It, it really is a, quite an eclectic place. If you haven't been down there, you should visit. So besides the obvious challenges of coming through a pandemic, staffing, what, what do you feel as an entrepreneur are some of the biggest challenges of right. running a business? I think the, the first one I'm, that I'm thinking of is quite fundamental. It's creating a mission statement for your business because that mission statement drives everything that you do. All your strategy and tactics flow from the mission statement. So again, my mission statement to begin with was not maximize revenue, but maximize good art and try, and like I said, aspire for great art. Um, so that changes my product mix. It changes the offerings that I'm gonna give. It changes when somebody comes into the studio, do I accept that job or turn it away? Is that something that I can do well or can I turn it away? If my mission statement had been something to the effect of let's maximize revenue, I might be making jewelry all day. I might be making glass jewelry day after day after day repetitively. It's not what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. so, my, so I created a mission statement, which was, again, create good art and, and concentrate on that. Really a passion and really yeah. focus. Yeah. So, so what advice would you have for people who are thinking about starting their own yeah, business? Yeah, I've, I've got a, a couple I was thinking of. Um, one is um, follow your passion. So for me, getting up and going to work, or not even work, getting up and going to the studio is 
no problem. I don't, I don't dread Mondays and I don't necessarily celebrate Fridays because I like going to the studio. I look forward to going every day. So if you follow your passion, you're not going to work another day. Um, but you might think, well, what if my passion won't pay the bills? What if it's so esoteric or, you know, out there that there's that, that it's not going to pay the rent? Well, then I would say probably you got to keep your day job and, um, work on that, figure out how to expand it. How can you expand the market maybe, or how can you expand the, um, you know, what you do instead of making a product, maybe you teach other people how to make a product or sell supplies for making that product. So if you follow your passion, you know, maybe you can't quit your job right away and start it, but you can do that. Um, some other advice I would consider is, um, find your sweet spot. By that, I mean, find the things that, uh, you know, sell and that people, and that people gravitate to. And the way to do that is just listen to your customers. When they, when the customers come in the store, it's always an opportunity to say, you know, to, to talk to them. I mean, if they walk out with not spending a penny, but you maybe have learned something from them in terms of, um, you know, what they could want. Right. For example, I was getting a lot of people saying, do you teach? And at be, in the beginning, I didn't want to teach because it, it takes away from my artistic endeavors. So I didn't really want to teach, but so many people have asked me to teach. And it seems like coming out of the pandemic, a lot, a lot of people really want to learn to do glass so, and how to fuse glass. So now I offer classes and they're going awesome. extremely well. That's fantastic. Um, and one, one more thing, Rob, is um, social media. You got to be savvy in social media these days. All the many successful business people have told me, you need to be on social media. You know, you're missing an opportunity. And I, I admit, I'm not good at it. So I'm actually in the process of hiring a consultant to, um, to get me through it because you just have to be good. And so if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, I would say get savvy on Instagram as quickly as you can. Right. Start building a following now. Right. Well, that, that's a great story, Eric. And um, just lastly... Uh, as an entrepreneur, how, how has joining the chamber assisted you? What made you decide to join the right. chamber? Well, since I moved from Boston to the western suburbs, I had to build all, all new networks. I had to make connections to the art scene in Hudson, and I had to make connections to the business scene in Hudson. So I joined, um, well, first of all, I joined the Hudson Business Association for, a lo for the very local Hudson people, and then I joined MRCC for the bigger regional uh, scope that it has. So that's um, just a way to get plugged in. There's a lot of opportunities to go and network. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of fun events, sometimes during work, sometimes after work, and um, a chance to, you know, to see other, other business people. Great. Well, we're thrilled to have you and uh, best of luck with your business. And if you have not uh, had the chance you got to check this uh, the shop out. It is the studio is phenomenal, and you can just feel the sense of creativity. And we wish you the best of luck. And thanks for being our first guest. Thanks for having me. All right, our next segment is going to move from creativity and art, design, and glass into our favorite subject, taxation. <laughs> And uh, I'm thrilled to welcome our next uh, member spotlight from the chamber, uh, Joey Lovett, with Liberty Tax in Marlboro, Massachusetts. And uh, Joey, welcome. Looking very sharp, I might add. Thank you, Rod. Thanks um, for having me. We're thrilled to have you. And with everybody on today's um, segment about entrepreneurial and vision associated with it, tell us the story about how you came into Marlboro with Liberty Tax. Yeah, great. Um, so this is a, a family business. It's a family venture. And 17 years ago, um, my late father-in-law found the Liberty Tax franchise. Uh, he found it to be a suitable model for what he was trying to do post-retirement. Um, roped in my brother-in-law, my other brother-in-law, and his wife. And they opened their first office 17 years ago in Webster Square, which is still to this day kind of our flagship. Um, since that day, just slow, steady expansion. And then, unfortunately, he passed several years ago and made a phone call to me and my wife, who were residing in Denver, and put the fish hooks in us and reeled us in and said, I need some help. And so he essentially hired my wife to be his boss wow. because she's just this amazing multitasker, expert at anything administrative. Plus, she had a 
close to 20 year career in financial lending. So always been good with numbers. And I think to get her out here, he had to sell me. Okay. So um, with that- You were in law enforcement. I was. I was uh, pushing a radiator as a patrol sergeant on a graveyard shift north wow. of Denver in a very, very busy jurisdiction. Um, and this is the early onset of COVID and uh, George Floyd era. And so law enforcement was a pressure cooker. And I certainly didn't want to stick around to see if it was going to explode or cool down. Um, I wasn't necessarily running away from something as much as I was running to something. And so when Billy kind of extended the invite, would you guys like to help us expand? I was all about it. And the beauty of that franchise model is you don't have to make the cookies. They're already made. You just have to follow the recipe. And so that was very attractive too. Having um, started and failed at a number of businesses prior to this, mm. I didn't necessarily want to try to reinvent the wheel. I just wanted somebody to hand me the parts and say, you know, go assemble this and it'll work. And that's exactly what happened. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So uh, besides the normal challenges of you mentioned COVID, um, staffing mm -hmm. you know, today for those types of businesses, what have you found to be the major challenge? Because I know you're growing, you know, quite dramatically. You, growth is absolutely one. But technically, I mean... Taxes, you could read the tax code all day, every day, and it would take you close to, you know, three days, 24, 7, 3, you know, all the way around the clock. Um, it's just so technical, in and out, and so many rules. And then uh, in the last two years, look at all the changes the government made. They issued for the first time ever stimulus payments, advanced child tax credits. Um, they increased the amount per child. Um, so there was just so many changes that, that were unprecedented. And here we are somewhat new to the business ourselves, just mm -hmm. me and my wife, not necessarily Liberty Tax, um, trying to navigate the technical aspects of it. So that, that was extremely difficult, was just the changes that were being done on a political scale nationally. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, growth, growth has um, been really exciting and really scary at the same time because we are constantly looking for good help trustworthy people and the amount of personal data that we have, right. you know, your name, social, who lives in your house, how much money you make. We can't lower our standards to, to fill a seat. Mm -hmm. We have to constantly maintain a high threshold for our hiring practices and make sure everyone's clear on their background checks. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things that we don't want to sacrifice, um, the quality of our employees, because that's a reflection of our reputation. Of and, and quite frankly, that is something I've found also to be a huge challenge is managing a reputation. And when it comes to taxes, nobody wants to do their taxes. Nobody right. likes doing taxes. Um, but it is the largest financial transaction uh, Americans make year over year. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely important to get it right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting because you said you've uh, started up some businesses that didn't work out, mm -hmm. and then you went into the franchise model, if you will. So for people out there who have explored, maybe I should become part of a franchise, what, what suggestions would you have for them if they wanted to explore that path? Sure. Consult, consult, consult. I mean, somebody's been there, done that already. Okay. Somebody either is the franchisee or is in charge of that area development. Um, and if it's a reputable franchise, there's going to be plenty of information online. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people that you can ping, talk to. Um, I'm always available through the chamber. I mean, that's part of the reason why we want to do this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Liberty Tax isn't just a tax shop. I mean, we do entity creation. We do business structuring, bookkeeping, um, all sorts of stuff that are not just components of business, but cornerstones, right. key elements of uh, success or failure. So, right. I know you're actively involved out in Colorado with Chambers as well. What what draws you to that? You just touched mm -hmm. on a little bit. What do you find is a benefit of being part of the regional chamber? Yeah, great question. Um, it, it has to really boil down to the community partnership piece is we knew that when we came into Marlboro, we wanted to be part of the community. The, the business piece would follow, but we needed people to A, know that we are here, B, know that we weren't going anywhere, and C, know that we could be trusted. Mm -hmm. And I think immediately when you get vetted through a chamber, there's a level of reputability that comes with that, mm -hmm. um, that is well worth anything you might pay in membership dues. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but then you get to tap into this network. And you know, part of opening a business is hopefully you're generating revenue. So where are you going to find your clients? You need to get your name out there, and you need to get your name out there in the right way. Mm -hmm. um, and I found the, the chamber to kind of be that, that one-stop shop to help you with all things that are startup. 
Right. And hopefully this is going to be a conduit as well to let people know that. One of the things that I found fascinating was that you also uh, employ a Brazilian and Portuguese uh, speaking uh, mm -hmm. employee that does taxation. Yes. Um, and I think that goes on to serve a very large portion of the community very in, much so. in the region. So I, th I thought that was outstanding as well. Um, anything you want to say to kind of make people relax a little bit about <laughs> taxation? Absolutely. I mean, the biggest thing is we do free estimates all the time. Second yeah. looks. You can bring us your prior year tax documents and let us take a look and we'll tell you if there's a way that we could find you some more money or maybe somebody made a mistake. And because we train on this thing, you know, eight months a year that we're not doing taxes, we are training to do taxes, doing continuing education and doing training. A lot gets overlooked. Right. And the beauty is um, now that we have 15 locations, I have a just an incredible team of enrolled agents, certified bookkeepers, um, crypto experts. Crypto has been a huge headache for a lot of people that mm -hmm. didn't keep track of their transactions and don't know how to treat it. Um, so there's just, there's a lot there and it doesn't cost you a dime to pick up the phone and give us a call. And chances are we can help. Well, that's period. great. Yeah. Well, we're thrilled to have you in Marlboro and wanted to thank you for being a part uh, of mm -hmm. the series and continued uh, success. Well, Marlboro is an awesome community and we love it here. So Best thank of you. Luck to thank you. you very much. Yeah. Okay, so to close out our first series uh, around entrepreneurs, I was thrilled to be able to get a very busy man. Uh, to come in and sit with us, uh, Tiago Silva from Tiago's Painting. And Tiago, we welcome you in. And uh, the reason I'm excited is in doing the research on you. You have a fascinating entrepreneurial story that I would love for you to share with the viewers. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. First of all, I want to thank you for having me here today. Our pleasure. I feel uh, honored to be one of the first uh, MRCC members to participate in the show. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, so thank you. And um, yes, I mean, basically, uh, you know, everything started when my wife and I, my wife Zelia and I decided uh, to come in here uh, in 2005. Uh, and obviously, you know, we came, we came for the same reasons that most immigrants do, right? Uh, for the opportunities, uh, looking to better our lives and uh, help out our families back home. And, uh, you know, when I got here, uh, speak, you know, I spoke no English, uh, $2,000 in our pockets, two suitcases, and uh, amazing. I uh, didn't know anybody, you know, didn't know anybody at all. My wife had some relatives here uh, that uh, helped, you know, helped us out in the beginning, uh, you know, gave us a place to stay and, uh, you know, helped us uh, finding our first job. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, and then, uh, you know, I started working at a Brazilian bakery, like, you know, two short weeks after. Uh, I was a baker in Brazil, so uh, hmm. I'm not sure if you knew that, but uh, I worked many, many years as a baker in Brazil. So uh, What was your specialty? Uh, everything. Okay. Everything, uh, breads, you know, um, uh, everything you can think of in a bakery. I, I was, you know, I was the only baker uh, mm -hmm. in, in the bakery, so, and I was the only thing I knew I could do. So, uh, she, uh, we found a job, uh, you know, a job at a Brazilian bakery in Maynard, and uh, it was just a part-time job you know, at the time, and uh, obviously I needed a full-time job. So uh, that's, uh, that's when uh, my wife's uh, cousin, Juliana, right, uh, saw this note at a uh, local Brazilian market that this guy named Alan had left looking for someone to help him out, you know, paint his own house. He was not a painter, he was just, you know, a homeowner looking for someone to help him paint, it, you know, his house. And uh, she saw the note, she was like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe Tia can help. And uh, she calls him and is like, she's like, uh, oh, I know just the guy for you. But the only problem was that I had never held a paintbrush in my life before. Wow. You know, <laughs> plus spoke no English. So, uh, and then, uh, you know, there, there, you know, was I the next day uh, meeting this guy. You know, he picks me up at this local, you know, market, uh, brings me to his house. And uh, that's when he start, you know, he starts teaching me how to paint, you know, doing all the cutting ends and rolling and all that. Uh, wow. That's basically how I learned. And what year was that? That's uh, that's 2005. That's wow. only you know uh, a few months after you know after I arrived. Okay. You know so, and there you know there I was uh, you know painting room by room in his house and huge a massive house in Saltboro, 
and uh, I was there for like you know quite some time. I don't I don't know maybe six months or maybe even more. I don't remember, but we I ended up painting the whole house inside. So uh, and then after that, he found more help, and then we we painted the outside of the house too. Hmm. So and after we you know after I finished his house, uh, he started. Uh, basically, you know, recommending me to all his friends and family. And uh, there, you know, there I was uh, going house to house, small step ladder in my back seat, you know, uh, you know, performing small interior painting jobs. You mm -hmm. know, that was the only thing, I, you know, I could do uh, at the time. So, and then uh, that's, uh, and then while I was doing that, I, I was taking English class at a, at a church in Hudson. I don't even remember they were offering, you know, free, uh, you know, English English classes, and mm -hmm. I was, I was taking English classes there, and I met uh, this guy named Edson that uh, became a friend and a, a, a business partner, right? So he invites me to open a business with him. He he had been living here for you know already quite some time and had a lot more experience than me, so I was like, why not? You know, I, you know. Same year. Uh, that's uh, I think that's was on the second year. Okay. On the second year. Uh, that's when I met him. And then, um, uh, we opened, you know, he had some contacts, right? So we opened the business and it started out by taking uh, subcontract work. <laughs> so we, you know, we found this company, uh, out of Ashland that started subbing out work for us. And, uh, after, you know, after a year, uh, things weren't working out well. Uh, and then Edson decided that was time for him to move back to Brazil. And, uh, you know, he moved back and with his family. And uh, unfortunately, recently, I just f found out that he passed away. Mm. So, um, you know, may God bless his soul. But uh, it, was, it was a very sad news. But anyways, and, and then uh, I kept the business. You know, that's, uh, that's third year, right? And then the fourth year, I, I found another company that was uh, offering subcontract work. And I continued to do so, right, for another year. And then, uh, and then beginning of 2009, that's when I quit, you know, uh, and went on my own because okay. when while I was doing subcontract work, I was, you know, I had a website done. I was advertising, doing side jobs here and there, you know, here and there, and uh, you know, trying to you know get my own customers. Mm -hmm. Right. So beginning of two thousand nine, I wasn't happy with the subcontract work. Again, wasn't making enough money. Enough money, you know. Uh, I was like, I, I, I either I'm gonna go on my own or I'm gonna find a job and work by the hour because it wasn't mm -hmm. wasn't worth it. So, okay. and that's, that's when I, you know, all of a sudden I started, you know, getting referrals, you know, water of mouth, you know, uh, and never stopped. So it's, that was roughly 2009. That's 2009. That's, okay. I, I never forget because that's when my daughter was born. Wow. So. so fast forward to 2022, how many folks do you engage now with your company and truck? Give us a sense of how well, big it's got. Yeah. I mean, today, uh, you know. When I was doing subcontract, it was me and two other guys, right? Mm -hmm. So three guys working 10, 12 hours a day trying to get as much work done to, you know, to make a living, you know. Fast forward today, uh, we have over 30 employees working now. That's incredible. And, uh, That's incredible. Yeah, what what a story. It, when I think about it, it's like, it's, you know, I, I, I would never imagine, you know, if you were to tell me, you know, 15 years ago, I would not believe it. Yeah, know? yeah. Well, I, and... Uh, for those of you who may not know, I, I think you're probably one of the busiest uh, painters and services probably in the region from, you know, what we understand from yeah, folks I we think, know. Yeah, uh, I think in the region here, I think mm -hmm. we're probably one of the largest uh, okay. painting companies for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. So what differentiates your business uh, for folks who don't, or just uh, finding out about you? What what represents? Oh, I think, uh, I think uh, the main thing is customer service. Okay. Right, I think uh, uh, you know the customer service is the most important part of any business. I think uh, uh, when you get that first message, you know the way you treat the customers right at the beginning mm -hmm. uh, into after you perform the work is is I think is what uh, you know sets us apart from uh, from the competitors. Okay, so for folks out there hearing that story, which is so unique, and it, you know you could you know, really say what a phenomenal story of people coming to seek opportunity and, and succeeding. But yep. for folks thinking about getting into their business and specifically in services, which mm -hmm. we know can be challenging, what advice do you have for them? Uh, I would say, you know, if people that are thinking of starting their own business, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I would say 
don't think another day, you know, uh, do it, do it now. Uh, it'll be challenging, you know, they'll face, uh, you know, it won't be an easy journey, but it will be worth it. You mm -hmm. know, find a mentor, find a role model, you know, I, uh, you know, set short term goals, you know, five year, you know, five, five year, 10 year, you know, uh, and uh, see yourself, visualize yourself 10 years from now, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I would think, and you know, maybe you can shed some light on it, but clearly from a challenge perspective between, between finding good help and the pandemic when mm -hmm. people were wary of having anybody inside their house, like how did, you, how did you struggle through that and what were some of the other major challenges that you faced as an owner? Well, I think, uh, well, pandemic just happened now. So uh, for us, it, it, for us, it wasn't an issue. It was actually, it was actually good for us. Mm -hmm. You know, I think uh, we we were like first year of pandemic, we were up thirty percent compared to the year before. Amazing. And then the second year, we were up another thirty percent. So I was like, I was, I was in shock because you know I was not expecting that. And uh, and then uh, inflation now, right? So just starting, we, we'll see what's going to happen. But mm -hmm. so far, he hasn't, uh, he hasn't, you know, uh, bothered us. So good. and. Uh, but I think that, you know, the major challenging when it's starting out was to uh, uh, winning trust of customers, right? Uh, right? Especially for me, I had, you know, I had no experience in, in the sales uh, industry, you know, because, you know, if, if you start a business, you're either selling a product or a service. Right. And uh, how do you do that without, you know, without uh, references, without uh, background? You know what I mean? Without ha having any previous experience. So, and plus with the limited English mm -hmm. that I had. Mm -hmm. So that uh, only happened after years and years of, uh, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and providing quality work. Right. So I know that personally, when I started with the chamber, um, knowing you through uh, Decorex, as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. I kept hearing and wanted you to come be a part of the chamber yeah. and chased you. I know, you, I know. <laughs> chased you because I heard this reputation and uh, we're, we're thrilled to have great service companies, you know, yep. in the chamber. What made you finally decide to get the... Well, I think uh, networking, okay. you know, uh, being uh, closer to the community. And uh, I know I haven't been very active as a member since I joined about a year ago, but mm -hmm. I've, always, I've always wanted to be, you know, uh, closer to the community I've always sponsored uh, local events as much as I can. Mm -hmm. I always try to help, you know, because it's not only about, you know, taking, it's about giving. So, right. you know, and that's, that's why we came here. Well, that is quite an exceptional story. Um, if, uh, if you're looking for top quality, you know, services, uh, interior, exterior, is there any other services you provide we don't know about? Well, yeah, interior, exterior, we provide, uh, uh, you know, carpentry work, you know, uh, not finished carpentry, but mostly repairs, uh, uh, exterior repairs, uh, carpentry, you know, work, uh, uh, cabinet finishing, you know, refinishing cabinets, awesome. you know, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, and um, in painting in general, you know. That's awesome. Well, listen, we, we are thrilled to have had you on. It is quite an inspirational story, and we wish you continued success and uh uh, thank you for joining us today. Awesome. Thank you. And that completes our first series. Uh, we help, uh, hope you found it very informative, and we look forward to exploring other industries as we move forward with the membership spotlight through the Chamber of Commerce. So thanks for joining us. 